There are some athletes who are very talented and because of their talent, they don't work as hard. Due to this, you can see that the skill is there, but the work ethic isn't. But other athletes dedicate their entire life to their craft indulging every inch of fiber of their being into what they do in order to reach the pinnacle of their respected sport. Exhibit A, Cristiano Ronaldo. Although he is talented, the longevity of his career is due to him taking care of his body, working very diligently, creating opportunities for himself, which has exemplified him as one of the most iconic athletes in the world. Exhibit B, Jeff Neal. Born on August the 28th, 1990 in Dallas, Texas, Jeff Neal was raised by his mother, Vicky Frazier Neal, and father, Ed Neal, and also grew up alongside his sister and younger brother. Little is known about Jeff's early life because he keeps things private. However, his parents would play a pivotal role in him growing up, shaping Jeff throughout his journey. As his father has been crucial in showing him guidance, and his mother has been a huge source of inspiration as they also both contributed to Neil's resilience and determination, attributes that are essential for any fighter. In his adolescent years, Neil would play American football and would go on to play football at private university, Texas Lutheran. However, Neil was not satisfied with the football program there and would go on to transition to compete in mixed martial arts, being coached by Saif, so, Jeff Neal found solace in martial arts. Starting with traditional disciplines, he soon discovered his passion for mixed martial arts as he was honing his skills under Saif and developed the hands of Steel Monica, a nod to his striking prowess. In 2010, Neil would go on to make his amateur MMA debut, beating Bobby Hernandez via knockout in the second round. He would go on to compete seven times in the amateur circuit following his coach's guidance, ending his amateur career as six wins and one loss. With a few amateur wins under his belt, Neil was ready to make a leap into the professional MMA scene. On August the 5th, 2012, Neil would go on to make his professional MMA debut against David McAfee at Extreme Combat Productions, where he would win in the first round via rear naked choke. He would also go on to win his next fight against Zach Board via TKO. However, he would face adversity in his next fight coming up against Martin Sano on the 19th of April 2013, as he would lose via rear naked choke. Following the defeat, Neil would bounce back and go on to win his next four fights in various promotions. He would have an almost year and a half break from fighting for unknown reasons before facing more hardship at Extreme Knockout 34, challenging for the vacant XKO middleweight championship, as he would lose to current UFC welterweight contender Kevin Holland, on January the 28th, 2017 via TKO in the third round. Jeff's ability to overcome adversity is a real testament to his character as he would again return to the octagon to face Bilal Williams at LFA 16 on the 14th of July, 2017, winning the fight via TKO in the first round, displaying what real grit and determination looks like. Little did Jeff know that this win would give him the opportunity to fight on Dana White's contender series for the chance to be signed to the UFC. The fight would take place on the 25th of July, 2017, just 11 days after his last fight, where he would come up against Chase Walden. Neil would finish the fight a minute and 56 seconds in via TKO, really demonstrating why he carries the name Hands of Steel, as his punches pack a lot of weight. This impressive performance and the showcase of how he could make quick work of his opponent granted him a contract with the UFC. It was also revealed that in November of 2017, Jeff and his partner would have a daughter. On February the 18th, 2018, Jeff would make his long anticipated UFC debut at UFC Fight Night 126 against Brian Camozzi, winning the fight via rear naked choke in the first round. Neil joined the UFC not only to make a name for himself, but to also make a statement that he wasn't just there to be complacent. He was there to be one of the best. Jeff would also go on to extend his winning streak, beating Frank Camacho, Bilal Muhammad, Nico Price, and Mike Perry, all in a year and four months. His fight with Mike Perry was one of the biggest tests yet, exclaiming after the fight, I got the job done, I couldn't be happier, as he was the first man to put away Mike Perry via knockout. Not just demonstrating how hard he hit, but also showing that he has the skill and fight IQ to keep up with the most elite fighters in the welterweight division. Although Neil was fighting, 
playing in the USC. He was also working at Texas Roadhouse in Dallas for 10 years until his fight with Mike Perry in late 2019, where he left the job. However, in June of 2020, he revealed that he had returned to his job as a server after failing to get a fight schedule. However, things would take a dramatic turn in Jeff's life, as in August of 2020, Jeff went into septic shock after suffering from an unspecified infection, and he was admitted to the intensive care unit where it was revealed that he also experienced congestive heart and kidney failure. It was something Jeff would never forget, but never did he think of hanging up his gloves. I never considered it, he said. I kept a positive outlook when they were telling me, when the doctors were telling me, I don't know if you're going to be able to fight again. I just looked at them and laughed. I was like, okay, no, that's not happening. It never crossed my mind. I knew I'd recover. I never had a doubt in my mind that I would recover. They were trying to give me a vest, like a shock vest, that would wake my heart back up if it stopped. I was like, no, I'm not doing that. They said, no, you need to do this. You might die. I'm like, I'd rather die. I really didn't mean to say that, but like shock vest or maybe die. Nah, I'm not doing a shock vest. Neil never received an official diagnosis. His theories are that he either had meningitis or a bad tooth. He also tested positive for COVID-19 in June, but he doesn't believe it had an impact on his health issues in August. In mid-August, he was released from the hospital and spent the rest of the month recuperating while he was planning his return to the octagon. It took me a little bit to get back to normal because when I first got back in, nothing felt the same, Neil said. I was constantly checking my heart rate and more of it was out of fear, you know. Would my heart stop if I pushed too hard? But the more comfortable I got, the more my body got used to being back in the gym. Gym, the harder I started working. Overcoming this adversity demonstrated that he was ready to face all of life's challenges. And he's not the type to look back and be fearful, knowing that a win over his next opponent would set him up in the title picture. After a year of sitting on the sidelines, Neil would return to the Octagon on the 19th of December 2020 to face Stephen Wonderboy Thompson in a five round bout. However, he would lose the fight via unanimous decision, losing the fight 50-45 on all judges scorecards. Jeff stated that during the fight, I couldn't see out of my right eye for four rounds and still managed to hang in there with a guy who's been kicking ass since I was like nine years old. I don't know about y'all, but I'm proud of me. This loss was Neil's first in the UFC. However, Jeff would go on to face even more adversity when he came up against Neil Magny on May the 8th, 2021. Once again, losing via unanimous decision 29-28, 29-28, and 30-27 across all scorecards. Well, there goes another one, Neil said. Felt really good in the first round, and the second one was close. Even in defeat, I'm still proud of this one as well. It was another honor to step in there with another crafty veteran in Neil Magny. I'm probably going to take some time away and take care of my health a little bit. My body hasn't been right since I got sepsis last year. I've been dealing with off and on sickness and severe lack of energy since then. According to Neil, he actually felt ill a few days before the fight against Magni and almost pulled out. Quote, I almost pulled out of this fight last week because I was vomiting and had diarrhea for three days after having to rehydrate and replenish what my body lost. I found myself sitting at 208 pounds exactly one week before weigh-ins, Neil revealed. Neil's journey in the UFC has been a roller coaster of triumphs and setbacks. From impressive knockouts to facing adversity inside the cage, he has showcased the heart of a warrior. However, these setbacks only fueled his determination to come back stronger. On a two-fight losing streak, it's clear that things weren't looking too good for Neil, and things were about to get a lot worse for him. As on November the 25th, 2022, Neil was arrested in Collin County, Texas on charges of driving under the influence and unlawful possession of firearms, two misdemeanors, which was caused from him being stressed out after a hard training camp, so he wanted to kick back and relax, and he ended up drinking way too much. Quote, one thing led to another, and here I am with a DUI, Neil admitted. And he was later released from jail on a $2,000 bond. Neil would return to the Octagon on December the 11th, 2021, only a few weeks after his drinking and driving incident, where he would face Santiago Ponzinibbio, where Jeff would win the fight via split decision. For his next fight, he would come up against Vicente Luque on August the 6th, 2022, where he would win the fight via knockout in the third round. 
Following that, Neil would come up against top contender Shavkat Rachmanov at UFC 285. And although he had put in an undoubtedly impressive performance, being Rachmanov's most difficult challenge to date, Jeff would lose the fight in the third round via rear naked choke, later admitting that he had underestimated Shavkat as he didn't want to believe the hype. As of today, Jeff Neal stands as a top-ranked welterweight in the UFC. His explosive style and knockout power makes him a formidable opponent for anyone in the division. With Jeff coming off a loss in his most recent fight, a win in his next fight against a rising star, Ian Gary, would put him back in the talks of being a top contender in the welterweight division and a future title contender. Although Jeff has had a fair share of challenges, he has shown that he can overcome major setbacks to display that he is able to keep up with the best of the best. And by aiming to be every ranked opponent in his path, his mission is to display what the nickname Hands of Steel really means.